One week after Pakistan's general election, the country's two largest political parties agreed to form a coalition government. Hello, I'm Anand Naidu, and this is The Heat. The Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz and the Pakistan People's Party announced this week they will lead a six-party coalition to secure a majority of seats in the National Assembly. The coalition has nominated the caretaker Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif to be the country's next Prime Minister. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan, jailed for corruption and leaking state secrets, described the alliance as, quote, mandate thieves. Khan's party, Pakistan Tariqi Insaf, won the most seats in last week's general election but failed to garner majority. We begin with this report from CGTN's Daniel Khan in Islamabad. In the wake of Pakistan's elections, the air was thick with cheers as Nawaz Sharif took center stage. I love you. Delivering what many consider a pseudo-victory speech just a day after polls closed. Sharif confidently declared the Pakistan Muslim League as the largest party and himself ready to lead a coalition government. But many speculate over a backroom deal with the powerful military, positioning Sharif as the army's selected candidate, and say it will not work out this time. We have seen the same people ruling Pakistan for many years. This policy has worn out now. It will not work anymore. The youth of Pakistan will not accept it. Meanwhile, Imran Khan's Pakistan Tehreek and Saf party faced a crackdown, with some candidates placed in jail or gone into hiding. Despite the challenges, Khan's PTI backed independent candidates are taking the lead, challenging the presumed predetermined outcome. Just hours after Sharif's speech, the jailed former Prime Minister Imran Khan also declared a landslide victory through an AI-generated video message. My dear Pakistanis, you have laid the foundation for a real freedom movement. I congratulate you all on winning the 2024 elections. Pakistan's election results have highlighted the complexity of the political landscape. With no party securing a majority, frantic negotiations are underway to form the next government. Established parties are courting independent candidates who must align themselves with the party or remain independent within days, according to the law. The uncertainty surrounding Pakistan's political landscape has led to concerns over the legitimacy of the incoming government. Allegations of widespread vote rigging have fueled protests across the country, prompting international players such as the United States, the United Kingdom and the European Union to express concerns and call for investigations into alleged irregularities. A primary concern for the new government is formulating a comprehensive financing plan to meet the country's growing external debt obligations. Negotiations for an extended and larger international monetary fund bailout are imminent, as the current $3 billion package is set to conclude in April. Without securing an IMF package, Islamabad's access to loans and investments from various sources will be restricted, potentially hindering economic stability. Pakistan's political landscape is undergoing a significant shift following the recent elections. The competing claims of victory, allegations of rigging and the challenges of forming a coalition government have added complexity and uncertainty to the situation. It is a crucial time not only for the incoming government, but for the whole country. And only time will tell how the political saga unfolds and its impact on the nation's economic stability and reforms. Daniel Khan, CGTN, Islamabad. For more now on Pakistan's coalition government, let's bring in our panel. Joining us from Islamabad is Senator and Barrister Saeed Ali Zafar. He's a member of Pakistan's Senate and the former Federal Minister of Law and Justice. Also with us from Islamabad, Javed Ar-Rahman is an investigative journalist and parliamentary journalist with The Nation. From Detroit, Michigan, Saeed Khan is an associate professor in the Department of Near East and Asian Studies at Wayne State University. And Musharraf Saidi is the CEO and founder of the policy think tank Tabadlab and former principal policy advisor for Pakistan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He joins us from Munich. 
Thank you, everyone, for being with us. Musharraf Zaidi, let me start with you. The Pakistan Muslim League, led by the former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, and the Pakistan People's Party, led by Bilawal Bhutto Zadari, they will join forces to form uh, a new government. Uh, Shabazz Sharif, the brother of Nawaz Sharif, has been nominated for Prime Minister. Both men uh, have served as Prime Minister of Pakistan before. Uh, you know, as we heard in our report, there's a great deal of skepticism over the conduct of the election, the outcome of the election, and whether this is a fair representation of the will of the Pakistani people. Uh, given that, how is the country responding to the outcome of the election and this emerging coalition? Look, before, before we talk about the outcome, I think we have to talk about the process. In the run-up to the election, there was a sustained amount of pressure that the PTI had to face uh, because of its troubles with the military and with the state. With their leader in jail, they've had to negotiate the space to run a campaign and to try to be given a fair and balanced sort of a run-up to the election, which they did not have. Despite that, the PTI, I think, performed remarkably well on election day. The election commission, until that evening had performed reasonably, relatively speaking, well. Uh, but then the votes that were coming in, the results that were coming in were suspended, and there was a black hole of information, and suddenly many of us woke up the next morning and saw a surprising turnaround in many seats. So the first thing to recognize, I think, is that there is a degree of unhappiness with the transparency of the process. Even despite that issue, the PTI is the single largest party in parliament. Whether they're independent or not is really a procedural and technicality issue. It, the reality is the PTI is the biggest party in the country with the most seats in parliament. So on principle, the PTI should have first dibs at forming a government. The fact that it's the second and third largest parties that are trying to establish a coalition government, I think from the get-go undermines the basic spirit of this contest of elections in Pakistan. Saeed Ali Zafar, uh, Shabazz Sharif said that he would support any party that holds the majority, including PTI-backed candidates. Let's listen to what he said. The political parties that are present here are the two-thirds majority of the House which has been elected. I said in the press conference today that if PTI-backed independent candidates are interested in forming a government, if they have the majority, then bring it. We will all respect this majority. So, Sayyid, independents aligned with uh, Imran Khan. They did win most of the seats, as Musharraf pointed out a moment ago, but not an absolute uh, majority. Um, how do you see this play out? And shouldn't the PTI have been given the first opportunity to form the government? I'll answer your second question uh, later. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the first issue is more important immediately. Uh, what I want to bring to your notice is that this election that has been held on 8th of February is probably the most controversial and maligned election we've had since 1977. And the reason is as follows. There was a tremendous amount of pre-poll rigging. And one of the most uh, important part of that was that the symbol uh, which PTI had, which was a bat, and which enabled PTI to actually contest the election. Because our law says that if you don't have a symbol, then the political party cannot contest the election. That symbol was taken away uh, just a few weeks before the election, which meant that all the candidates that we had fielded were unable then to contest under the banner of PTI. And the second problem was that uh, this, the common symbol, which bat, if that is not available, then the public would not be aware of which particular candidate belongs to PTI. And so they would not be able to exercise their vote. Uh, this became a big problem because most of the candidates that we had fielded or that PTI had fielded had different symbols. So a lot of confusion was created. And the only reason that this confusion was created was because all the polls prior to the uh, elections were showing that PTI was going to win a massive majority. Apart from that, the leadership of PTI was arrested. Most of them were in hiding. 
and those that wanted to campaign were not allowed to do any campaigning. If they went out into the streets to campaign, they would be arrested. Whereas our opponent parties, PMLN of Nawaz Sharif and uh, People's Party, they had a field day, they could uh, do their uh, corner meetings, they could do huge gatherings, uh, they could undertake all the campaigning that they wanted. So this pre-poll rigging was a really difficult time we had. But then on the polling day, and hats off to the Pakistani public, yeah. on the polling day, they quietly and peacefully, and I must say freely, exercise their right of vote. Okay. And so on the polling day itself, nothing went wrong. But then when it became, uh, when the time finished at 5 p.m. in the evening, and it was time to count the votes, that's when the post-election rigging started. And we saw that by 12 o'clock, most of the votes had changed. Yeah. And some of the key winning uh, candidates and the key winning positions yeah. that we had were overnight changed. So what happened was that we got a result, in spite of all this, we got a result in which PTI has the uh, maximum majority seats. Yeah. There are about 40 seats that are still uh, under dispute. Uh -huh. But we are not a majority when it comes to numbers, okay. if you look at the other parties. All right. So in effect, our constitution does not, now answer your second question, yeah. the constitution does not allow us, uh, or there's no requirement that the, 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 the largest party is given an option to form a government first. Right. It is an election of the prime minister, and okay. whoever wants to field the candidates can field the candidate, and whoever gets the majority votes of the, of the assembly uh, would be elected. All right. Prime I want to move on to Javed. Javed, um, before the election, it was predicted that Nawaz Sharif would return from self-imposed exile uh, to Pakistan with the blessing of the, uh, the military that he would win a fourth term. Uh, but as we have seen in the election, millions of young voters, young Pakistanis, delivered an election surprise with the candidates backed by Imran Khan gaining more support and seats than any other party in parliament. Now, that's led to some PTI members making these accusations of mandate theft, of vote rigging as well. Um, I mean, does this raise a really big question mark over uh, how, uh, imp how, how the veracity of this election? Thank you very much. Actually, the, and the fragmented nature of the results reflected a fragmented society in Pakistan. Pakistan is a polarized uh, society. Over 60 million voters this time exercised their right of vote. And I will say that around uh, 60 million are confused to see the results of the election. This is not the first, uh, first controversial <coughs> election in Pakistan. Like many other countries, uh, including America, allegations of rigging's, uh, even a pre poor rigging's are there. Uh, I, uh, let me share some short history of controversial election in Pakistan. In 1977 election, uh, in, the election in, in that election, ele allegations of rigging were there. In 1988, accusation of vote rigging was there. That was that made that election uh, controversial election. In 1990 elections, again, uh, election rigging that led to a political unrest in the country. In 2013 elections, yeah. maneuvering in some of the constituencies that led to a long sit-in, long protest in the country and political unrest was there. In 2018 elections, second last yeah. elections, result transmission, there was a fault in result transmission okay, system, um, RTS system. Yeah. Technical glitches were <clears throat> made that election uh, once again controversial. Now we will talk about the, the recent election, yeah. 2024 in February elections. Some of the factors make it differentiated from rest of the polls. Right. Independent candidates uh, for the first time surprised many of the political pundits, and you can say that most of the uh, these independent candidates were backed by PTI. We, we can say that without symbol of that they secured century. Right. 100 candidates won the seats and uh, actually 
they were deprived from, as my colleague was saying, that they were deprived from their political symbols some days before the election. In these elections, we will uh, talk about uh, the controversies that made this election controversial. Yeah, Javed, uh, First of them were, yeah. uh, I have discussed. Second yeah. was the mobile services was suspended. Okay, Javed, there, the there clearly are serious, there are clearly serious questions being raised here. I'm going to go to Saeed Khan. Saeed Khan, um, I mean, what do you make of the election outcome? And given what uh, Saeed Ali Zafar told us a moment ago about there being uh, vote rigging before the, not vote rigging, but poll rigging before the election actually took place, also something that we haven't talked about and that Who's behind this? I mean, we do know that the Pakistani military has enormous influence, political influence, in the country. Uh, we've heard the disappointment among Imran Khan supporters, even anger. What do you make of the way this has turned out? Well, Musharraf mentioned process over outcome, but I think the outcome is one that people perceive was already uh, something that was sought, uh, an Egyptian-style uh, election to preserve the power of Russian-style oligarchs and crooks, all enabled by a Turkish-style military junta, and both in the Pakistani diaspora, as well as among uh, not just a few Pakistanis, the suspicion that this was all something that was being orchestrated, facilitated, or at least endorsed and blessed by Washington. Uh, the fact that the uh, U.S. State Department uh, issued um, a statement uh, by its spokesman, Matthew Miller, in which it, uh, it lauded uh, the, uh, and welcomed uh, the elections uh, in Pakistan and only mentioned that there were issues regarding uh, the freedom of expression and assembly without actually commenting at all on uh, these allegations of corruption and vote rigging uh, is highly suspicious, particularly for those who are already um, mm -hmm. inclined to see uh, American meddling in the process. Uh, Musharraf Saidi, Imran Khan released uh, a statement on the social media platform X. It reads, I'm going to quote it here, he says, as the people of Pakistan have clearly pronounced their verdict, there is a dire need for democracy and fairness in Pakistan's elections. I warn against the misadventure of forming a government with stolen votes. Such daylight robbery will not only be a disrespect to the citizens, but will also push the country's economy further into a downward spiral. So quite a warning there from Imran Khan. Where does the PTI go to from here? Well, I, I, the way that I would respond to that is that the PTI, like other parties, also has a set of responsibilities. Uh, now, this is fresh for a lot of people that the PTI should be fulfilling responsibilities when indeed its leader has been incarcerated and sentenced to long sentences, at least in some of the cases, on really malicious charges that really are disconnected from reality. That being said, being the largest party in the country, controlling and engaging with the minds and hearts of so many young Pakistanis part of the responsibility for stability in the country indeed falls on, even as it may be, the jailed Imran Khan. So what were the options that lay before the PTI? Certainly they should pursue, and they are pursuing, a recourse to recounting in some of those constituencies where there is mm -hmm. a clear discrepancy between what happened on election day and the results that have been announced. Uh, to, to that end, the PTI is completely justified in contesting some of those outcomes. But I think the other part of this is that Pakistan, because it's such a, as Javed mentioned, because it's such a fragmented and diverse country, is very unlikely that it's going to produce a majority government, uh, you know, in any election. And so what the big parties need to do is learn how to work together. Unfortunately, from before the election, from its very genesis, and certainly throughout the last four or five days, instead of trying to engage the other parties, the PTI has said they're not going to talk to either the PMLN or the PPP. I think that really blocks the door and opens the opportunity for the second and third largest parties to go and form government, whereas in fact on principle, as I said earlier, it should be the PTI that's forming the government in partnership with one of these smaller parties, whether it's a PPP or the PMLN or a combination of other parties. Uh, that unfortunately is not the approach that the PTI has taken. They've taken the same irreconcilable and uh, confrontational yeah. approach that is their brand.
Said Ali Zafar, given what you told us a moment ago about uh, how the process has been undermined, uh, what are your thoughts on how the PTI moves forward? Uh, as you pointed out, as others have pointed out, it did get the uh, biggest number of seats, uh, but not an absolute majority. But how does it make its voice heard in, how the, in the way the country is governed? Well, this is what we've decided. Uh, number one, uh, the people have voted. We need to, uh, as a political party, not just respect that vote, but we need to also safeguard it. Mm -hmm. And to safeguard it, we need to recover our uh, seats that have been stolen, so to speak. Yeah. And for that, we, will, uh, we have legal recourse, and we will uh, exercise our rights, uh, go to the courts, and we will also protest, which is also our fundamental right. Uh, as far as the parliament goes, uh, this is parliamentary democracy. We have decided and we can form a government in KPK province, which is one of the provinces. Yeah. So we will have one provincial government uh, in, the, in the province. And in, in the center, we may not have the numbers right now. We will participate in the democratic uh, setup. Yeah. We will field our candidate for the prime minister's office. We will try and work with as many uh, individual uh, members yeah. of parliament as possible to get votes. Uh, and same with the Punjab assembly. Right. Uh, and if we succeed, then we will have a very, very robust opposition, a uh, huge opposition, probably the largest opposition the parliament has ever seen in both the, okay. uh, uh, the nationalist Good job. Yeah, Javed, let's listen uh, to uh, one of the voters. Uh, this is a voter uh, who voted for um, one of the independents that backed Imran Khan. Let's listen. We voted for Imran Khan because at least he was doing some good work. We were counting on him to come into power, become the prime minister again, and do something for the masses so that people get employment. As long as there is no employment, people will remain distressed. There will be robberies and thefts. I voted for PTI because I wanted my country to advance and the future of our upcoming generations to be bright. We had given our votes to PTI with this hope, but that could not happen. Happen. So naturally, we are very saddened that PTI did not win. Sir so, Javed, as we hear there, and it's very clear from those who voted for the PTI, that uh, they've got their priorities right. They're talking about uh, change, especially when it comes to the economy, when it comes to jobs in Pakistan. The inflation rate in the country is running close to 40 percent. This coalition that's being formed right now, do you believe that they're up to the task of tackling these very serious issues that Pakistan faces? Before coming to your question, before answering this question, yeah. I, after seeing this documentary, I will share uh, some of the interesting factors, effects uh, after this election. Even some heavyweights. Yeah, Javed, uh, can, I, can I ask you to be? Yeah, Javed, can I ask you to be really brief, please, because we are rapidly running out of time. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, the upcoming government, uh, no doubt, there will be a lot of in instability, a yeah. lot of political noise will be there, uh, uh, and uh, this political noise, not only in the parliament, outside the parliament, you will witness, upcoming government has so many challenges, including inflation. We will see blame game, point scoring. I am not seeing that uh, uh, the politicians will learn lessons from their past, Opposition will give tough time. Once again, they will tough time to the government as the government. And one thing is very important. Mm -hmm. Government allies, including the second largest party, has distanced it, uh, themselves uh, from the government. They will see and watch yeah. the game. And uh, I'm not seeing any miracle this government will do in the... Uh, in this coalition, in this weak government. They, they, this will be our weak government. I okay. will comment on it. Uh, and if you will say, uh, uh, I will share some of the interesting factors. Yeah. Some of the heavyweights, including uh, Jangir Tareen from Istikami Pakistan, Pramesh right. Khatak from Pakistan uh, uh, PTI parliamentarian, Siraju Raghav from a political party, they have distanced themselves from the 
uh, even to, from yeah. politics. Uh, Javed, I want to move. I want to move on to. Uh, okay, I want to move on to Said Khan. Said Khan, to date, no prime minister has uh, ever finished a five-year term because of the influence of the military uh, in Pakistan over politics. Um, so, what kind of relationship does Shibaz Sharif have with the military establishment in the country? Well, any prime minister is going to have a tenuous one, and I think that the pragmatism uh, in Pakistan is that you can go up to a certain line, uh, but you don't want to then antagonize uh, the chief of, uh, of the army, lest it go ahead and cost you your position or maybe even your life. And this is a sad legacy that's happened in, in, in Pakistan. But again, I think it's important to see that Pakistan yet again is within a broader geopolitical quagmire. And the elections that were already mentioned in 1977 and 1988, it was during the Cold War. And arguably, this election was in the middle of the new Cold War, with other players like Russia and China involved. If that is the way that Pakistan is perceived by the great powers, then the idea of who is the civilian prime minister, who is the chief of army, is really secondary, given the fact that uh, uh, hands hidden or perhaps more obvious are really calling the shots. And all this leads to is a further disillusionment among the party um, and also the public in Pakistan. I mean, there was so much, particularly with the youth, excitement and promise. Uh, in this case, that PTI was going to prevail, only to get shot down again. Musharraf, uh, I know it's early days, but if we look at uh, regional politics, uh, regional relations uh, in, in, uh, around Pakistan, I spoke recently with Shuja Nawaz, who is an author, a journalist, an analyst here in Washington, and he said that this coalition government, or any government that emerges after the election, should use the opportunity to reach out to Pakistan's a neighbor, India, and try and establish a better trade and economic relationship in the first instance. Um, do you think we could see efforts to normalize the diplomatic relationship with India? There have been efforts by Pakistani leaders for the last several years to improve relations with India, but these efforts are entirely one-sided. It's very difficult to try and shake somebody's hand when their foot is on your throat. And with the attack on Pakistan conducted by India in 2019 in February, and then the doubling down by India annexing and further trying to establish and justify its occupation of Kashmir, the idea that Pakistan should continue to somehow reach out to India, I think is, it's a fallacy that the Pakistani elite is certainly completely convinced by. So whoever is in power is invariably, like their predecessors, is going to try and reach out to India. India is in no mood. India is being courted by the, by the great powers, mm. including in many ways by China, given the dramatically escalating trade relationship between those two countries. Right. And it has no reason to try and concede any space or any rightful sort of arguments from Pakistan. And that's where we have to leave it. Thanks to all of you for being with us. That's it for this edition of The Heat. I'm Arnand Naidu in Washington, D.C.